So the if error function in Microsoft Excel can help us handle some of the errors that can come up. And there's a few possibilities. So let's imagine this scenario. We've got details about a bunch of cars, their miles per gallon, their horsepower, and their weight. And what we want to do is take the horsepower and divide it by the weight. Now the way to do that, pretty simple, just type equals horsepower divided by weight and what we'll enter. And what we want to do is to auto fill this, just select the cell again and double click on the bottom right corner to auto fill everything. Now initially at the first glance, this looks fine, but as I scroll down, I see this error that pops up. This is one of the possible errors that can, Excel can give us. And the issue is that it's taking a horsepower and trying to divide it by a weight that doesn't exist. We can't divide by zero. And so what I could do is find some way to handle that error. And so instead of typing out the formula as I did, maybe I'm going to say if error, and I'm going to add the calculation back, horsepower divided by weight, and I'm going to hit a comma, and then it's going to do something if there's an error. Maybe in this case, what I want it to do is just put in some text, invalid input. I'll close it with uh, quotations and parentheses. And so now anytime there is an error, that pops up, invalid input. I'll hit enter. And what I've got to do is autofill this formula again. And so I'm going to double click the bottom right corner. And now when an issue comes up, I see something like that, invalid input. Now, a lot of times if error can be helpful in if statements and things like that, and you can choose how you want to handle those. Maybe if there is an error, you want to do a different calculation. And so you could put calculations in there too. Thanks for watching. Now, if you want the link to the sample file used in this video, it's down in the description, as well as a link to an Excel course if you're interested.